Hi everyone, welcome back to Bixley's Tech Tuesday. Today, Chris and Andrew are taking on the topic of a fixed bid project versus time and materials. How are they different? What are they great for? How you should be structuring your project to have the best success when you launch your app out into the wild. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Fixed bid is when the requirements are, are defined, the time frame is defined, and the cost is defined. Everything is essentially known up front as much as reasonably possible. And then the project just starts and you know we deliver at these typically two weeks milestones. And that looks like kind of a traditional fixed bid project. Time and materials is where we're actually billing for our time. So to draw a contrast here, we do fixed bid if it's a project. Okay. If you have a budget, you have specific requirements, you have a time frame that you need it delivered in, we, do, we would do that as a fixed bid project. If it's not a project, if you say, hey, I just need a developer for six months to come alongside my existing team and help me out and I want to oversee them, that's not a project. That's you want some extra developments help and we do that as time and materials. And so time and materials is extremely flexible and it's for when clients aren't looking for, I have this much money to spend and I need it by this date, but rather I need this much help for this period of time. We've referred to it, and we still do at times, you know, as staff augmentation. Yeah. And time and materials, or that staff augmentation model, is the spot where you're deciding: Am I going to hire someone internally, or do I just maybe mm -hmm. want to outsource with someone? And the idea of just use the team for what you need them for, you know, pivot them in, pivot them out, is uh, very beneficial to lots of projects. Mm -hmm. But again, they're those more flexible type projects where you don't necessarily have a set budget and timeline and schedule of tasks to be completed mm -hmm. and that sort of a thing. Yeah. It's not that you can't follow a time and materials model when you have those parameters laid out, but it just lends itself to, I have time to spend R&D type stuff tailors really well to you know, time right. and materials. And that's something we help our clients do very early on in these initial initial discovery call is, does it, you know, it, does it make more sense for you to go project-based, which again would be fixed bid, mm -hmm. or does it make sense for you to go time and materials in a staff aug, right. in a staff aug type arrangement? And these, these things are pretty easily to uncover one way or another. If someone's talking to us and they say, well, I need this to be ready in, you know, 90 days, well, Staff Aug is not intended to deliver something at a certain date. It's intended to, you to, to provide you as much development bandwidth as you need. Or, okay, I have a budget of $110,000. Okay, that's probably not a good fit for Staff Aug. That's a good fit for a project. On the other hand, it might just be we have people that'll come to us and say, you know, we got a team of six developers. They're really busy. We have this an another initiative we want to start. And we'd really like you to provide us with two developers for the next year to help drive that. And well, then we may ramp it up to if we need an additional set of hands. Uh, that's really good for staff aug. And it doesn't require that they map out, okay, over the next year, for the first two weeks, we're going to do this. In the next two weeks, we're going to do this. We'll do that more in, a, in an agile type approach as we go. So we still, as we go through, we still help you identify priorities. We still help you know, do estimates and things like that. But the staff aug time and materials is intended to be much more flexible when you just need help for a duration of time, as opposed to project-based fixed bid when things are very well defined. And so we will we'll usually do a hybrid of the two. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of circling back to the whole MVP thing, both of them are appropriate. So what we'll do in many cases is say, okay, let's help you define an MVP, a three month MVP. We'll right. do that as a project. It's fixed bid. You'll move through that. And then afterwards, assuming your project's successful, assuming you're getting the kind of feedback you want from your clients, that it makes sense to continue with your investment. In many cases, that's a good time to pivot over to a staff aug model sure. where, okay, this thing is proven. Now, I don't want to go out and hire developers because maybe I don't know how to do that or I don't want to you know, have the overhead of doing that. I just need somebody 40 hours a week until I don't anymore. And that's a great fit for Staff Aug. So we love, we love to provide the hybrid of those two. In many cases, it makes sense to start out with the MVP as a project. Keep in mind with Staff Aug, it's more that you as the client are driving the priorities of what Correct. the developers are doing. So the, with Staff Aug, the intention is that, that you as the client, 
know the priorities. You don't necessarily need to like understand technically how any of these things are going to be done or what sort of technologies are going to be used, but you're going to drive what you know the next 10 things are on your list that are going to happen over the next two weeks sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So Staffog is done in a very like, like Kanban or Agile style iterative way where we're constantly getting feedback, adjusting priorities in two week increments or two week sprints, getting feedback going forward, as opposed to the MVP, where we're really going to be planning out the three months worth of work still right. in two week deliverables. But it's more that you're you, you because we're fixing the cost and the time frame, we have to plan that out. And so that's also part of the reason that we do MVPs as three months, because you can plan three months worth of work. It's much more tricky to plan three years worth of work. And then it's kind of unrealistic to think that that's going to be unchanging. So MVP or project base, we plan three months. Staff Og or time and materials, we plan in two week increments and split and sprints. I think of it, you know, kind of fixed bid. You're a, you're a, you know a customer that say for instance hires painters or something like that to come to your house and they're going to paint their house. So they're going to show up and you're going to have some kind of a consult on the front. You're going to pick out the colors and you're going to tell them these are how many rooms and they're going to buy all the stuff and you're going to lay out the whole plan and then they're going to show up one day and they're going to paint your house or it's going to take a week or however long mm -hmm. and then it's going to get delivered and you're going to pay and you're going to kind of move on. Whereas with time and materials as the client you're a little bit more like the foreman that's actually kind of working with mm -hmm. the painting team so you're still planning you're estimating all those things that you talked about and it's but it's more like okay we're in this room now and as the client you're kind of guiding okay well I, I think I want this wall to look this way. Let's get that painted up. Let's see how it looks. I like that. That's good. Okay, let's pivot over to this room now. And again, it's more of a build it as you go with estimates along the way, but you're involved through the process on the time and material side, but on the fixed bid, it's all that upfront planning. And it's not that we're going to box you out as a team, but you don't have to be as highly involved and you're just going to be able to look at those regular deliverable milestones along the way mm -hmm. when going with the fixed bed model. Yeah, they both have their place. Sure. Um, they both have their place. And I think with the same client, they both have their place just right. at different at different stages of the project. Earlier on, you probably want to do more planning. Later on, once um, the trajectory of the project has been established, also trust has been built up mm -hmm. between you know us and and the client. Then it's easier to take things in a more um, a more iterative and, and agile sort of you know two week approach there. Both models can work well with budgeting. The time and materials one is going to be more about budgeting throughput. And so you can budget as we do at Bixley. You know, we've got a development budget for X numbers of developers per month or per quarter. As opposed to fixed bid you're, or the project, you're really budgeting out with the project holistically. So it's more about the total cost of the project, budgeting that as opposed to time and materials, you're budgeting your, you know, your throughput or your burn rate. The nice thing about one nice thing about time and materials in this scenario and budgeting is that the time and materials is more flexible. So not that you can, you know, spend 40 hours this week and 30 hours the next week and 700 hours the following week. But certainly if as you're going through the project, you know, you're doing a burn rate of 40 hours a week, uh, business is going good, you're getting good feedback from clients and you want to increase that to 80, there's no problem doing that. I mean, we can completely just, you know, pretty much on a dime, adjust and start to provide you with the additional bandwidth that you need. As opposed to a project that would fix bid, that's different because we've already set out the cost of the project to go add more developers to that. It just requires more effort and you know change orders and things like that because it affects the overall cost of the project. It's, whereas it, again, with time and materials, it's really just kind of about your burn rate. And the funny thing is a lot of people that may even be self-funded, they assume that they want to go with a project base because mm -hmm. it's, I have this much money to spend. Yeah. Whereas being self-funded, you actually, again, with that flexibility you described, can pivot your team around. And as you get particular feedback, the money that's actually coming out of your pocket can kind of pivot and mm -hmm. shift if you need to cut budgets you know, yeah. forward and backwards. And it can even work with investment type mm -hmm. opportunities as well. If they're really focused on, that, like you said, that throughput of what is being delivered and what kind of feedback they're getting, it works great. Or perhaps they just want a set number so mm -hmm. they can cut a check every month. Yeah. Just It really depends.
And we even took some of the guesswork out too, where you're not even dealing with like disparate rates of like, this is how much yeah. you're paying for this, you know, like entry level developer. And this is how much you're paying for a senior level developer. And then here's our designer. It's just flat rate cost for our team. And we have highly talented, highly qualified individuals across all the verticals of technology. Yeah. And you just, again, have to budget. It's this much per hour and you're mm -hmm. going to have this many hours and we're going to plan on that for this many mm -hmm. amount of days, weeks, months, whatever it is. Right. So time and materials is still extremely easy to budget for because you're not just guessing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to the grocery store and, and shopping around. Do I want the Safeway Select or do I want the name brand? Right. <laughs> you know? I think it's worth mentioning too, and you kind of touched on this, that we do have um, certain team members that are very specialized in certain mm -hmm. things. So maybe in, in large scale system design or a sysadmin who's going to tell you, okay, you need to set up like this on Heroku or AWS and things like that. Or someone who's going to be involved in DevOps who um, might not be doing 40 hours a week for you, but you might want 10 or 20 hours a week to maintain your system depending on the scale. So we we can bring in people in varying capacities. You know, you've got your developers, which tends to make up the lion's share of the time. Sure. But then you also got these specialists who might help you for a month setting up your database, designing it to handle millions of users. Or the sysadmin who's going to automate, you know, the continuous integration or continuous delivery and maintain that, but initially spend some time setting that up. So the the whole staff hog model, the time and materials model like that, it allows us to be able to just pull in the specialists you need for the very specific scenario as you have and then kind of fade them back out into the background when they're not they're not needed at that time if it's something that is very straightforward and out of the box we're not going to reinvent the wheel and we don't need necessarily time and materials that we can focus it from a project standpoint and say it's going to be this much money and this much time but those features that are going to be more forward-thinking new different um, ingenious in some way or simply just unknown we don't know no one's built it before it's very difficult for me to say hey Andrew so this thing that no one's ever built before that you want to build it's gonna be a hundred dollars and I'm gonna have it done in an hour I don't know like mm -hmm. so that's where team velocity that you've touched on comes into play yeah it's taking like-minded tasks that we've done in the past that could be similar to these particular tasks and achieving somewhat of an understandable end date and cost delivery for that feature based off of what we've done in the past mm -hmm. and taking it more time and materials as opposed to just fixed. The more the more innovative the project is, the more it's, you know, they're having to evangelize for mm -hmm. it and, and blaze a new trail, the more critical the MVP means becomes because because it's so innovative you don't know how your customers are going to receive it. While the MVP is appropriate in most cases, most projects, it, I would say it is absolutely essential if you're dealing with a very innovative project. And if it's not innovative at all, you might want to ask yourself if you should be building it or not. Because there always should be some you know, key distinguishing factor that's going to make what you're building innovative and different than what the other people are building. But it's the question of, is it going to be 5% different? Is it going to be 100% different? Or most likely somewhere in the middle. Thank you for joining us for this conversation about the difference between a fixed bid project and a time and materials ongoing contract with Bixley. If you have a project that you need help with, whether that be staff augmentation or you're ready to really dive in deep to project planning, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us at bixley.com and set up a free consultation. Or if you have any questions about the stuff that we talked about today, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Until next time, this has been a Bixley Tech Tuesday.